Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 28th of August 2011. We've had an exquisitely beautiful coronal mass ejection that I would like to show you later. But first let's deal with a trivia question. 222 years ago this day, William Herschel discovered a new moon of Saturn. Which one was it? The answer will be given at the end. As far as solar activity is concerned, it looks as though the sun is going brain dead again. We've had no sea flares in the last 24 hours. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what is going on. We only have four officially numbered sunspot groups on the sun at the moment. Overnight we lost 1271 and 1278. Region 1275 seems to have decayed. Region 1280 may have increased its area slightly but is not particularly impressive. Region 1277 and 1279 are fairly stable. There is a small region growing up ahead of region 1277 as we can see here in this more detailed image. But again, it's not a particularly impressive region. In the southeast we do have a region coming over the limb as we've been anticipating for the last few days and it looks quite a promising region although it's not as spectacularly large. We'll see more details of it when it uh, rotates further onto the disk. So all in all, solar activity has been very quiet the last few days. And unless some of these regions start to regrow or we get a new region emerging, I don't think we're going to get very much in the way of increased activity. In the white light and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, in contrast to yesterday, I'd like you to concentrate on the individual active regions to look to see which ones are decaying the most rapidly. These are the ones that are least likely to produce any activity. The changes are subtle and you may want to go into full screen mode to do this. There is nothing subtle about what's going on in the transition region at the moment. We've had several uh, bursts of uh, ejecta. And there are two prominences that look very pregnant for lifting off themselves. Those are in the southeast and the southwest and I've put, shown them here with some green arrows. The two that have actually produced ejecta, there is one in the northeast and one in the northwest. First let's take a look at the one in the northwest which is by far the more spectacular. Uh, and this was a very large and rapid event so one would expect a coronal mass ejection associated with it. The one in the northeast is much smaller, so may or may not have produced a coronal mass ejection. So let's take a look at the uh, 304 movie and see whether you can see these events. There's the one in the northeast, and then at the end the one in the northwest. In the low temperature coronal movie, take a look at the new region coming over the southeast limb. Assess whether this region is dynamic and bright enough to be a major flare protrusor. The thing to note in the high temperature coronal movie is there's not only a region on the southeast limb, but another region behind the northeast limb, which also looks quite bright. So we have the possibility of a new region coming over the northeast limb in the next day or two. Now let's take a look at what you've all been waiting for, the coronal mass ejection that I mentioned at the beginning. Here look at the northwest quadrant of the coronagraph images from the SOHO spacecraft. And you'll see that there's a beautiful coronal mass ejection uh, towards the end of the sequence. In fact, if you looked carefully, you can see that the first was a faint coronal mass ejection, followed by a much brighter one. You can see it in a large field of view as well. So where did they come from? Some have attributed this to a small B flare in region 1275. However, I don't believe that to be the case. So we should go take a look at the coronagraph and coronal data from the stereo spacecraft to see what's really been going on. Using the stereo A data, which means that the Earth is to the left in these images, we can see that both of these coronal mass ejections were on the back side of the Sun. Now let's turn to the coronal imager. I've taken three frames from the movie. One at 400, one at 700, and one at 1100. And what I'd like you to do is keep an eye on this area that I've marked here in this first frame. As you can see by 0700, this area started to brighten. And by 1100, there's a long arcade of bright loops along this channel. This means that this coronal mass ejection was associated with a filament eruption, not a flare. Turning next to the solar wind, we see from the ACE data that the temperature of the solar wind jumped up to about 100,000 degrees rather suddenly uh, earlier in the day. But the velocity of the solar wind seems to have temporarily increased, but is now dying down again. And the density of the solar wind has been steadily decreasing. The high energy electron flux has taken a nose dive in the last 24 hours and of course because the sun is so quiet we have not had a proton event. The aurora zone looks far more active than it did before 
However, the uh, Kp index, which is a measure of how disturbed this Earth's magnetic field is, is varying between 0 and 2 as it has done for the last two days. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B2 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 63, radio sun intensity remains at 105 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is about the same at 375 km per second, but with a slightly lower density of 1 proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are generally considered as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that we have a chance of C flares, but M and X flares are increasingly unlikely. The sunspot number should probably ease lower. CMEs are still possible. The solar wind speed should go higher, but the chances of getting a geomagnetic storm are very unlikely. Because those two uh, coronal mass ejections were on the far side of the sun, they're unlikely to affect us. From the composite coronal image, we see that we have a region about to come over the northeast limb, but it's a very weak one. But a couple of days behind that, there seems to be something that's much brighter. In the southern hemisphere, the next region due over is probably three or four days away. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of The Sun Today or some of my other videos, go to my channel. They're all listed there. The answer to the trivia question is Enceladus. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.